The York Imperial Apple changed the Shenandoah Valley to a Garden of Eden. Southern farmers early on could barely grow anything without cutting down beautiful terminal forests and burning them and burning them until they were a mound of ashes with which they used to lime their deficient soil. And the apples they grew were for themselves. They were fed into crushers and then into presses to make cider, and then filtered through stills to make apple jack. Cider vinegar was made, apple butter, and pies. But then the commercial apple industry in Virginia, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania began to grow in the 1830s because of several big breaks. The United States' ambassador to England, a Mr. Stevenson from Albemarle County, Virginia, treated Queen Victoria in 1837 to several barrels of delicious Albemarle Pippin apples from his home state. And she loved them so much, she lifted the trade restrictions on these apples into England. They became a phenomenal favorite demanding soaring prices, which made Virginia apple growers rich. The prices of apples began to rise and rise until after the Civil War, they were at a steady high level. And then there came cranky old Ben. That's the Ben Davis apple, often called the grower and shipper's dream and the apple eater's nightmare. It's a dream to the grower because it stored well, it kept well, and it was hard as a rock. And it grew on any soil, anything between pure clay and pure sand. Now for the eater of the old Ben, it was a little bit like eating a stone. Some of the other big breaks were the invention of liming by Edmund Ruffin. The discovery of an island made almost entirely of bird dung off the coast of Chile called guano gave the farmers more with which to fertilize their soils. Now the York Imperial had a slow, steady appearance. There was once a Mr. Johnson living in his farm in York, Pennsylvania, who noticed boys gathering all the apples under a strange outlaw apple tree on his farm. In 1820, he grafted from that tree, creating new trees, and sold them. And in 1871, the National Pomological Association declared what an excellent apple this York Imperial was. In fact, it's an excellent apple today. It gives that yellow hue to the apple sauces which you eat, gives that tang to many of the cider vinegars that you taste, and it gives that firmness to many of the apple slices that are in cans and jars that you buy at the store. By 1880, apples were big business. Farmers in the valley were well on their way as one of the two most productive regions in the entire nation in growing apples, along with the Yakima Valley in Washington State, which had not yet reached its full potential. The epicenter of this booming apple industry on the East Coast was Winchester and Martinsburg. In 1876, a Dr. Border planted mostly York Imperials and some Ben Davis on his farm near Carneysville. He knew he had something going, even though his neighbors laughed. A railroad line, a mile away, excellent soil, and an excellent product. Ten years later, his success was so great that an explosion in orchard growing increased many fold throughout Berkeley and Jefferson County. This boom was aided by the federal government, who in the 1880s paid for the creation of agricultural experimental stations to disseminate new ideas in growing apples, which are still in existence today. 